Or when you're talking, they have to find the negative in everything. Wasn't that khutbah amazing? Yeah, but somebody double parked a car. I'm sorry. You have to find something. You have to find something to poke at. Something to be negative about. This is Ya'us. And Allah says, the only, the only university you will graduate into from this high school of Ya'us is Kafur. The only thing after this kind of depression is disbelief. If you're constantly complaining, you have no reason to be grateful to Allah. No reason to praise Him. And when that praise disappears, all that's left is disbelief. SubhanAllah. It's a very logical progression. It's a very logical progression. That's why it's so important. And Shaykh Abdul Nasir in another session spoke about this. Allah Azza wa forbids us from losing hope in Allah. Why? Because hope is the first thing to go. Iman is next. Iman is next. And it starts for many of you with jealousy. A lot of your depression is a result of jealousy. And it shouldn't be. I'll, give you some, I'll, I'll end with some practical examples. Just appearance, guys. Just appearance here. There are things that are part of our culture now that instill jealousy, that introduce jealousy into the family. Birthdays. Birthdays. I'm not talking about a fatwa. You know, I, I'm not qualified. But you go and you get one of your kids a gift. What's, what, have you seen the look on the other kid's face? Have you ever seen what they look like? When's my birthday coming? Mm. It was just last month. I gotta wait 11 more months? And until then I have to just tolerate that this one received special accolade over everybody else? You guys review, you guys repeat. The story of Yusuf alayhi salam, dad loves him more than us. You repeat that every birthday in your household. If you're gonna get a gift, get it for everybody. If you're gonna get it, get it for everybody. And if you're gonna give a gift, make a part of it a gift that's supposed to be given to charity together. Allah gave us this, we're gonna give some of it back. Instill good values into your kids. Values that don't brew jealousy among them. Stop comparing your children to your other children. Stop purposely praising some of your children in front of other children. Stop doing that. You're my good son. Looking at the other kid, you're my good son. Right? This is my good daughter, mashallah. She listens to me. <laughs> Man, if you, could, if you could see the flames coming out of the other one's head. <clears throat> I don't know why these, all these like psychological forms of psychological torture became standard in Muslim households as parenting techniques. But that's all they are, it's psychological torture. You're just finding a way to like stick it to your kids. Come on. Your kids should feel the most comfortable with you. The most relaxed with you. Their jealousy should be removed. They should be protective of one another. Now Allah says, now the human being will be informed. What did he make a priority out of? And what did he put on the back burner? That's the translation I'll prefer here. Bima qaddama, what did he give priority to? What took taqdeem for him? What was priority number one? What took precedence? وَمَا أَخَّرَ And what could wait? What were the things that you put on the back burner? The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't do a good deed. The human being says, it can wait. I can do it later. The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't leave sin. He says, I'll leave it later. Or, you know, let me do what I want right now. I'll do that later. I have time. تَقْدِيمَ and تَأْخِيرَ Not the grammar one. The one for life. Human beings will be thoroughly informed. What were your priorities? What did you put ahead? What came first for you? What came later for you? Bima qaddama wa akhar. The other meaning of qaddama wa akhar in tafsir juz amma I mentioned also. Qaddama also means what you've sent forward. You've done deeds, you've done works, and every one of them are waiting for you. Our deeds are waiting for us. Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. You've sent collateral over. You've sent deeds over for processing. And you're going to meet those deeds on Judgment Day. I don't meet my deeds now, I just do them now. I will meet them then. وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضُرًا Then you're standing face to face in front of their salahs. If your salat was lousy, you'll be standing in front of a lousy salat, staring right at you. That's what it's going to be. If you were lying, cheating, backbiting, angry, arrogant, condescending, whatever you were, looking right at you in the face. And then you're going to say, Mali hadal kitab. That's the reality of it. Bima qaddama wa akhar. 
What did he make a priority out of? What did he put on the back burner? This is one of those life transforming ayat. The human being will be thoroughly informed, this was your priority. This is what you spent time on. This is what you did with your free time. This is what you thought can wait. You had all these dreams, I want to memorize the Quran. What did you do for it? How many seasons of how many TV shows did you watch instead? That was a priority for you. What do you wanted to memorize? Oh, but it can wait though, inshallah, one day, when my heart is purified, then I shall start. You know? بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَرْ بَلِ الْإِنسَانِ No, no. Yes, on that day, the human being will be given thorough news, but it's not like the human being is blind now. Rather, the case is that the human being, عَلَى نَفْسِهِ Against his own self, بَصِيرَ Is fully insightful. There is one person that knows so much about you, and nobody else knows about you. And besides Allah, and that's you. You have an insight into who you are, what your flaws are, what your limitations are, what your capabilities are, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what opportunities you avail, what opportunities you get lazy about. You know that about yourself more than anybody else. And you and I decide to lie to ourselves. We just decide we're not going to have an honest conversation with ourselves, about ourselves, and about ourselves with Allah. We don't want to have that honest conversation. For some people, all they want at the end of their life, what is success to them? Maybe I'll own a house. That's success for them. Maybe if I have this much money, that means I have success. Maybe if I got married to this one or that one, maybe that's, that means I have success. But I go back to what I started with. There are some people who are happy with doing just the minimum. Just the minimum. But I am here to tell you the young people in the audience today, Allah has blessed you and I'm telling you He expects great things from you. He does not expect the minimum from you. There are so many Muslims, the only thing left of Islam is their name. That's the only thing left. They don't care about Salat, they don't care about Halal and Haram. They're far from this deen. What can I do to further this deen? What can I do to... I shouldn't just be happy that so many people come and attend Jumu'ah. Does that mean everybody's heart is clean? Does that mean that we, are enough, we don't need any more reminder? Is that what that means? Or are there evils in our society? Are there youth that are turning towards drugs? Are there young people that are just living their life for no purpose? All they do is play video games and watch movies and go to sleep. And the, if you ask them for a purpose, they say, I want to graduate and get a job. Is that a goal? Get a job? Allah gave us such higher goals. Your job itself is a means to a higher end. But you know what? We are living in strange times. The people who need the da'wah the most today are the Muslims themselves. But even if you get a good job, but you don't do your job, you got the job, but you show up late every day. You got the job, but you don't finish any projects. You're sitting there at the desk wasting your time. You're gonna lose that job. Somebody else will come and do it for you. You will not keep that job even if you qualified. Qualifications are not enough. You have to do the work. Allah Azza wa Jal is keep giving all of us. He's already qualified us. We are people of La ilaha illallah. We are already qualified. But that doesn't mean we're doing the work. If we don't do the work, if we don't make, we don't concern ourselves, if we don't care, then you know what's going to happen. In tatawallu yastabdil qawman ghayrakum. You turn away and Allah will replace you with a nation other than yourselves and they will not be like you. They will not be lazy like you. And those are when, Mus when young Muslim people have real iman. When young Muslims have real strength in their belief, then they, can, they have the power to change the world. They have the power to make the world a, a better place. But when young Muslim people don't have real iman, they don't have real conviction, then they are a waste of space. They are a waste of society, a waste of a generation. The only thing in their life, the, only, the biggest, the, the most important thing in their life is when is the next movie coming out? The most important thing is when is the next iPhone coming out? The next most important thing is, man, I wish I had that car. That's it. Your life doesn't go any further than that. My teacher used to say that Islam is similar to climbing a mountain. You know, when you're climbing a mountain, you throw a hook and you climb. 
if you throw a hook not very high, then you will only reach that much. You can't reach any further. If your goal is money, if your goal is a six pack, if your goal is a car, if your goal is a promotion, if your goal is entertainment, if your goal is girls, whatever your goal is, then you're only gonna get that, you won't get anything else. But if your goal is something higher, to serve something more than yourself, you don't live a selfish life. You wanna live for the sake of Allah and for the benefit of others. That's how you want to live. Then you will benefit yourself definitely, but you will be honored in the eyes of Allah because you set your goal much higher. Our deen in this beautiful ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal describes it, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي This is my path. A sabil is a path. And you know what? Allah did not say in this ayah, قُلْ هَذَا دِينِي This is my deen. Tell them this is my religion. This is my Islam. This is my truth. This is my book. He didn't describe it with any other language except this is my path. And all of you know a path is like a journey. So Islam itself, Islam itself is being described as a journey in this ayah. What does that mean? That means you have, in any journey you have to make progress, right? So even if you take one step, you are more closer to your destination than the day before or the step before. Every single moment you are making progress in a journey. And in this ayah, Allah's Messenger says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this religion of mine and this religion of yours and ours, Islam is a journey, which means I am supposed to do something more for this deen than I did yesterday. And I'm supposed to do more tomorrow and more tomorrow and more tomorrow. I'm supposed to go further.